Good morning, boys and girls, and hello to any parents and carers out there that are watching today. Welcome to our virtual assembly. Now today, I'm gonna to be focusing on skills for work. You might remember, I think it was three weeks ago now, I spoke about skills for life. So today we're focusing on skills for work. But before I do, I do that, I just wanted to say a big hello to everyone. Um, we've got a couple of changes, which I think just about everyone will be aware of now. So on Monday, we have got, so Monday the 22nd of February, we've got nursery to primary three coming back to school. Primary fours to sevens, you've still got a little bit longer of online learning, but we've got to keep listening and watching to the news and find out what our First Minister is going to announce to us, or perhaps our Deputy First Minister is going to announce to us about your return. We know it's not going to be till at least the 15th of March, um, and we've just got to wait to hear what the data tells us. And when we're saying we've got to hear what the data tells us, basically that means we've got to find out what's happening with all of the cases and the figures. Um, and that will be looking really closely to see how many COVID cases, if we get a rise with um, the rest of the, the nursery to primary three boys and girls coming back. So um, I don't know if you'd heard, but it's, it's the same message we're getting all the time. But Nicola Sturgeon has said that we really need to stick with the rules. And the more that we stick with the rules just now, and when the nursery to primary three come back, the more likely we are to get the primary fours to sevens back. Okay, so make sure you keep following those rules. Even if you've got a brother or a sister that's coming back, if you're in primary four to seven and you're still at home, make sure you still follow the same rules as you're sticking to just now. So remembering all the physical distancing um, and keeping on top of hand hygiene. And I'm sure parents and carers will be making sure they're not meeting up with um, other households, just one other person outside. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my skills for work presentation. Okay, boys and girls. So um, I'm gonna to focus today on skills that you need for work. Now, what we're trying to do for you in school is to try and prepare you to be ready to go into the working world to do whatever it is that you're, you have ambition to do. And to be part of the working world, and in our aim to develop you as the young workforce, you need to develop lots of skills. Now, some of these jobs have different skills um, that you require, and you'll find that you have probably are naturally slightly better at some skills than you are at others, but you can definitely develop all of your skills. And just because you're not maybe too strong in one skill just now, could be, for example, organization, or in some types of communication, you might find it trickier. You can definitely do things to make yourself better. So let's have a think about some of the jobs that there are out there just now. Can you think of any? We can see some pictures here of some examples. Can you spot the policewoman? I wonder what skills she or he would need. What would you need to be able to be in the police? I can see a scientist there, someone that looks like they're undertaking experiments. I wonder if that's a scientist that we've had recently. Our scientists recently have been trying to find, or some of them have been trying to find a COVID vaccine for us to help us come out of lockdown. I can see a photographer there. Lots of different skills that a photographer would need. We can see someone working within the construction industry. Perhaps it's a builder. I wonder what skills you would need to build a house. Lots of different jobs that are out there. Now, within those jobs, we need to have different skills. And I briefly went over some of these the other day. I'm gonna just change from this screen and have a look over here. So remember this poster I showed you the other day? So this is some skills that you'd need for work. So in your work, you need to be able to manage time effectively. 
Now that's one that you can um, develop. Sometimes as teachers, managing time can be a bit tricky when you're first, first become a teacher. Sometimes you over plan things and you find that your lessons, you don't fit everything in that you want to cover. And that's something that you can get better at over time. You can manage your time effectively in terms of planning and organizing as well and making sure that you've got time to do all the jobs that you need to do through an organization and system. We've got communicating by speaking. That's a really important one in most jobs, I would say. We've always got to communicate and work with others and we need to be clear with our communication. Communicating in writing through solving problems as well. That's a really difficult one sometimes, something that requires perseverance. Undertaking tasks at short notice. You need to be able to be flexible in the workplace and um, find out what you need to do and, and listen to your, um, your boss or your customer. You need to be able to work with others. You think creatively and critically. You need to be able to learn and continue to learn. And you need to be able to take responsibility for your own development. And you also have to be able to be managed by others, but also manage others as well, depending on the job in which you have. So boys and girls, I'm now going to move on to some short videos. I have asked some different people to um, share what their job role is and the skills that they have. So I hope you enjoy listening to these videos and it might inspire you um, to either further develop your own skills or it might inspire you to think of some other jobs that you might not have known existed. Let's have a look to see who we've got. Hi, my name is Shona and I'm a lawyer at ITV. I use skills that I learned at school in my job every day. Um, communication is really important in my job because I need to listen and speak to producers about the TV programmes that they're making so that I understand exactly what they'll be doing and can help advise them in the best way. Reading and writing are also very important because I spend lots of time writing emails and then drawing up and negotiating contracts um, to document all the details of the programmes being made. I use maths and numbers to look at budgets and look at how much programmes will cost to make. Um, and I need to be organised and on top of my work using time management to make sure I meet deadlines and get everything done in time so that programmes can be made and delivered uh, in time for us all to watch them. Good afternoon, Walker Road. My name is Alex and I work for an oil and gas operator as a contracts and procurement manager. That is my job title, but what that really means is I look after buying items and services for the company. On a daily basis, I require the following skills. Numeracy, I have to evaluate the costs on a daily basis so that the company does not spend more than it needs to. I have a piece of paper on my desk for my adding and subtracting throughout the day. Communication, I have, to I have a team to manage and I have to speak to them multiple times throughout the day so we are all aware of what each other is doing. Clear communication allows us to help each other and makes our job easier. Reading and analysis. A large part of my job involves reading over large contracts and documents. I have to be vigilant and methodical when reading to ensure my understanding is correct. Anything missed could be costly. ICT skills. I'm on the computer most days, reading and replying to emails, having online meetings, recording and presenting data. So I am using PowerPoint, Word and Excel every day. I love my job and I really hope you all work hard at school so that you can find a job or something that you can enjoy when you are older. Keep up the hard work. Hi everybody, my name's Alison and I run Right Here Productions, which is a film, theatre and entertainment company. So um, there's lots of skills that you need for running your own business and for the kind of work that I do. Um, it's a creative business, so you need all kinds of different creative skills and um, things like literacy for we write scripts. So things like that is really important and um, time management skills. That's really important. You need to be kind of responsible for um, getting everything done to a certain deadline, that kind of thing. So that's really important and uh, having good people skills, too, because obviously you have to speak to loads of different people. And um, if you're the sort of head of a business and um, clients, people at different events. 
uh, the people that work for you too, for example. Um, and numeracy, so for budgeting, that kind of thing, if you're um, working out how much you can charge for a different service or um, even just for needing to pay people to working out what you can pay the people that work for you. Um, so yeah, there's loads and loads of different skills. I'm sure there's many more too, but that's a few of the skills that you need for a job like mine. Hi there, boys and girls. My name's Catherine and I'm a nurse. I look after patients who are not feeling very well in a hospital. To become a nurse, I had to work really hard at school. In particular, I had to work at maths because it helps me work out what medications people that are sick need to get. It also helps me work out what time they need to get them and all the different calculations needed for that. I also had to work really hard at language at school because I need to use those skills every single day to communicate with patients and their families to make sure that they get better soon. So if you want to become a nurse, you need to make sure you work really hard at school in all your subjects. Hi boys and girls, my name is Milto, I'm a cardiographer. Basically what I do is, uh, is that I look at people's hearts every day. I work in the cardiology department in the Aberdeen Hospital. In order to work as a cardiographer, you have to have a lot of different skills. But some of them that I can think of right now is that you have to be a good communicator because you get to meet a lot of people from all over the world and you have to be able to understand what's going on and communicate effectively. Another thing that you, can do, that you have to have is you have to be very caring because you work with a lot of different people again and sometimes they might be quite ill or quite elderly. You have to be patient with them. Another thing you have to have is you have to be a team player as you work with all sorts of people and you all work together to make people feel better and not be sick. <laughs> Another thing that you have to do is you have to be very good at your literacy skills because you have to pay attention to the small details and be able to read things properly. And um, the last thing that I would say is you have to have good IT skills because you work with machines and computers every day. I think there's more to my job than that, but that's the main things that I can think of, boys and girls. Bye! Hello, my name's Cara and I'm Mrs Duncan's daughter and I am a knitted textile designer. I currently work as an assistant textile technician within the University of the Highlands and Islands. Right now, I'm just working on some techniques for the students to complete. Right now I'm working on a cable technique. This pattern is seen in a lot of popular knitwear clothing. When I'm not teaching students how to knit, I'm working with knitwear companies to help them design and create some of their clothing. We use programming Shimasiki software, which then tells the machine what to knit and it does it automatically. This saves the companies a lot of time as they can create some really interesting pieces. When I'm not at work in the university, I'm making my own designs. Here's one I made earlier. I snoot in a fair isle pattern. And sometimes I knit samples for other companies so they can use them in their designs. The first skill that you have to have within fashion and textiles is to be a visual thinker. If you believe that your design will be amazing, it will. This moves you on to skill number two. You have to be a good communicator. If you can't show the people you're working with what you think your design is going to look like, it's not going to work with well within a team. And that's how you create good team working skills, by being a good communicator and being able to present your ideas well, whether that be visually or through writing or through a talk. The third skill that you need to have is persistence. Now that's different from patience because you may try and be very patient. It, can, it could all go wrong, but with persistence, if you try it once and don't succeed, try and try again. My fourth skill is keen eye for detail. It's really important when you're making products, especially to go into shop, that everything is perfect. And if you have a keen eye for detail, you can pick up where there might be something that isn't quite right. And that's a really good skill to have because you'll look out for things in the future and that makes you have less and less mistakes. So in that sense, you'd have to be someone who's really keen to learn and develop skills, which will make them have that eye for detail in the future. And my fifth and final skill is enthusiasm. If you show enthusiasm with your design and your creativity, everyone around you will feel that. And that's the best way you can be within fashion and textiles. Hello, boys and girls. My name is Sarah Blake and I work in finance. 
If you don't know what finance is, I help to manage the money of different companies. At the moment, I work for the Highland Hospice, which helps look after sick people. So it is very important that the money that we have is put to the right places. We don't want to waste any money and we want to make sure the money is going to the people that need it. I have to rely on computers to help me with my job because there's lots and lots of numbers. But sometimes things can go wrong and I'll look at a number and I'll think, that's not right. And I'm relying on my mental arithmetic to tell me that. I use percentages a lot in my job and that is based on the multiplications I learned in primary school. So your times tables are very, very important and they will help you throughout life, not only in just some jobs, but when you go shopping. When I do my food shop and it says there's 20% off this, I will use the multiplications that I learned in primary school to help me. And let me tell you, they might seem a little bit tricky now, but when you do them over and over and over in your head, they become part of your subconscious. And now as a grown up, I can look at numbers and my brain automatically can tell me what percentage it is, or it can tell me two numbers are added together or divide by a number. I also have to do a lot of reporting in my work and for that I need reading and writing skills, especially spelling. I have to tell you when I was in school I was not very good at spelling and I had to work very hard because I don't want to look silly when I send somebody an email and I put the wrong word in or I spell the word wrong even when I'm texting my friend Miss Story. So that is another skill that I can tell you I use every single day and I am so glad that I learnt it when I was nice and young. So boys and girls, now that is just a very small sample of some of the jobs out there and a very small sample actually even of some of the skills that you need. Now what's um, quite different for you boys and girls and I find this quite interesting although a little bit scary perhaps but a lot of the jobs that you will have when you are older might not have even been invented yet. That's because we're living in a rapidly changing world. So when I was at school there was lots of different jobs available that are still available now. Teachers, doctors, nurses, accountants, these kind of things. But do you know what there wasn't? I don't think there was any such thing as a YouTuber. Um, even some of the game program that, go, that goes on now wouldn't have existed when I was younger. But these are all jobs that are growing and getting larger and there's more um, availability to go into these types of jobs now. Um, so it's really important that you do develop your skill set and the skills that you have are transferable. So I'm going to move on to a, now a video from Mr. Donald, who's going to talk to you a little bit more about how you can get support with developing your own skills and a little bit about how we as teachers still develop our own skills, because that's the thing, boys and girls, we're all still learners and we're all still developing our skills. Like I said in the beginning of the video, there's skills that we can get better at. And I find, since when I first became a head teacher, my skill set has grown. In fact, even in this pandemic, my skill set has grown. Certainly, things like digital technologies were a little bit more challenging for me. But through the pandemic and working with others, I've managed to make myself a little bit stronger and a little bit more confident when using digital technologies and using that as a tool to communicate. Let's see what Mr. Donald's got to say. To help you with your jobs when you're older, boys and girls, some mums and dads might want to look at this. This website, myworldofwork.co.uk, gives lots of information on how how you might want to get your job when you're older, but let's say be a mechanic or a teacher or a nurse, a doctor, and um, it tells you how to get your job, gives you lots of tips on how to write a CV, and something, a document tells all of your experience and all of your work history. 
It also gives you opportunities for apprenticeships for when you're older. That's these things that you can get if you want to be paid uh, and work at the same time, like a mechanic, for example, or a chef. It also gives you lots of information about how to train and how you can get money. Did you know, boys and girls, that your mums and dads and you, when you get older, entitled to £200 to help you towards the cost of a course? And you don't have to be, um, you have to be earning less than £22,000 to get it, but you've got to be 16 or over to get this. And this is a good website to look at and um, to help you with your career options as you get older. Another website that you can look at is Skills Development Scotland. And what they do is they give you a list of all the skills that you need to help you with your job when you're older. But remember, boys and girls, a lot of teachers didn't know what they wanted to be when they were older, and that's okay. Just to give you a little flavour, Mr. Donald has to do lots of online learning as part of my job too. So even teachers have to learn. And education is a lifelong journey, it's not a race. So Mr. Donald has his own Google Classroom type activities through the University of Aberdeen, where I've got these courses to complete. And if I click on one of the courses, you can see that I've also got lots and lots of different jobs I need to do, I need to work through. But we have people called a lecturer at a university or college to help you with your jobs. Whereas in a school, you've got a person called a teacher. So don't worry if you don't know what you want to be when you're older, boys and girls, because lots of things change. Have a look at the My Career Option tools and have a look at what options you might want to think about when you're older. I look forward to hearing about what sort of things you want to be when you're older. One other thing I want to point out to you boys and girls is this thing called the Scottish Credit and Qualifications Framework, or SCQF for short. Now, when you go to the academy, you work towards what are called SQA qualifications. You start working through national qualifications, national four and national five, and S3 and S4. And then you work your way up to doing higher and advanced higher qualifications. And some people want to then go into work places, like being a mechanic or a chef, and they work towards qualifications called Scottish Vocational Qualifications. And they are qualifications that you do when you're working. Some boys and girls then maybe want to go to college or university. You might get a higher national diploma or a higher national certificate from college, or might go on to doing a bachelor's degree or an honours degree in a subject. So most teachers have an SCQ of level 10 qualification and honours degree. Some teachers have a master's degree or are working towards a master's degree. I know Mrs Gallagher in uh, primary one, she has a master's degree. Mr Donald works towards his master's degree just now. And then some people go on to do a higher degree called a doctoral degree, which gives them the title doctor might not necessarily be a medical doctor that helps you with uh, any health problems, but they become an expert in a certain subject. So boys and girls, it's okay not to know where you want to be, but have a think about your future career and what things you might want to do. Have a look at my world of work. And if you're a primary six or seven, you're going to be doing profiling on your work-based um, qualifications and skills that you might need for your future job later on through something called Google Sites. Well, that's everything from me today. I hope you've enjoyed today's assembly and hearing about some of the different jobs that are out there and the skills that you need. Maybe you can have a think just now about um, what job do you want to do when you're older? It's okay if you don't know, but maybe have a think about what skills that you have already or what, what or or some skills that you maybe want to develop a little bit more. I'm sure I will see you all soon. I have to say I'm pretty excited that on Monday I'm going to get to see all of the nursery up to primary three. Um, we'll see you there back to school. I'm going to leave a little another little video for you, you boys and girls in nursery to primary three today and um, just to talk to you um, about the return but can't wait to see you. Primary fours to sevens, let's keep our fingers crossed that it's not too long until we get to see you as well. Um, but you keep working hard at your remote learning as I know that you are. Have a lovely weekend, everyone, and stay safe. See you soon. Bye.